Let's take a walk around this 2010 Coachman Freelander 23BB, lovingly nicknamed Tahoo, because it's based here in Tahoe and it's a Yahoo full of fun. We'll take you up to the front here and take a look inside the Triton V10. It's a Ford E450 engine. This, uh, this V10 is plenty powerful for pulling a vehicle of about 11,000 pounds. Got a 1450 gross vehicle weight rating. So it pulls the Sierra Mountains really well. We just went over Donner, or rather uh, Sonora Pass, uh, 9,500 foot pass with a 15, 20% grades and uh, he was able to maintain the speed limit the whole way. On the driver's side here, the first bin you'll see below the driver's side here is where we keep our leveling blocks and some hoses and cleaning supplies. Then we have a four kilowatt Genrag generator that comes in handy for boondocking. It's a dually, so it's nice and stable. Uh, below the, uh, the city water intake here and the uh, storage water, which is I think almost 100 gallons, uh, so you can boondock again store water. And then here's the uh, exhaust for the heater and the ventilation for the refrigerating heat exchanger. And here we have access to the generator cord and we can plug into shore power. Uh, it takes 30, uh, 30 amp generator power or that little yellow adapter you'll see deep in here allows you to adapt to 120 volt shore power. And of course we have a propane tank um, which powers the refrigerator and the uh, stove. Uh, range, I should say. Here we have a really nice access door. You can see that provides access to a back bunk, some nice storage. That back bunk flips up and it makes it easy to pass through and load the RV. A couple windows up top and on the side. On the back, we've got a North Shore mountain bike rack that holds four mountain bikes and a backup camera that comes in super handy since uh, uh, there's no rear view mirror, of course. Ladder for accessing the roof, we ask that guests not go up there. Coming back around to the driver's side, of course, we've got a nice awning that we never ever leave out when we're not with the RV. This little bin down here is where I tend to store firewood, but you can store shoes there as well. There's the access to the back of the RV. We'll go inside and take a look later. Kitchen window, vent for the kitchen range top, a little entertainment center, battery, the other side of the dually, and then where we store all our fun stuff like camp chairs and uh, bocce ball and cornhole and uh, uh, portable stoves, frisbees, all that good stuff. That takes us to the end of the RV here and we'll close it up and take one more look around. One of the best things about glamping in an RV is the ability to use the restroom whenever you want, wherever you want, day or night. Pretty easy to get through this RV at night because it's spacious and open into a very big, clean and comfortable bathroom. So we've got a nice glass shower door, no shower curtains. And uh, the shower is very comfortable. You don't want to use a lot of water in an RV shower because water is heavy and there's only so much you can carry. But if you want to use it, do. And if you hook up to city water, then it's kind of unlimited. A couple hooks for towels. Uh, we got a nice fan to ventilate the bathroom. That works fine. We've got conveniences uh, like laundry detergent and some wipes and first aid supplies in the bathroom cabinet. Nice big mirror, hot and cold sink. We keep linens and towels below that sink. Single ply RV toilet paper only because we don't want to clog the septic system. We have some cleaning supplies down there, extra toilet paper, and a simple, clean, functional toilet with some instructions about how to use water to seal the scent. So the water acts like a seal and keeps things smelling nice. It's a big, clean, comfortable bathroom and a real nice thing to have with you when you're camping. Alrighty, let's take a closer look at the inside of Tahu, this 2010 Coachman Freelander 23BB. As you can see, access from the rear is real simple and uh, very convenient because it takes you right to the kitchen. So it's great for cooking and handing off coffee and breakfast and whatever you might want to cook. Although oftentimes we like to cook off a Coleman grill at the campsite. Beneath this wood cutting board is a three burner stove and uh, we keep pots and pans and cooking ware and cleaning supplies down below the sink here. And of course, uh, cutlery, etc., in the drawers below. Beneath this little wash basin is a very functional sink, hot and cold water, of course. Microwave above that works off of shore power or a generator. Um, and then we have a control panel up here that shows you how much liquid propane gas, battery, fresh water, black water, and gray water uh, tanks capacity. Uh, the water pump, water heater, and then the generator primer and starter. We've got 36 hours in the generator, so lots of Lots of generator hours left. Up here we keep important things like coffee and 
French presses and uh, some other paper towels and sundries and things. And then uh, we've got pantries back here, big pantry up top, middle and below. We'll show you the bathroom later in the back, it's a great location. One reason we love this RV is it's got two six foot six inch bunks and we've got a couple six two boys. So they like hanging out back there. This lower bunk, as you can see, is a pass through. So you can load the RV from there and the person sleeping back there can crack the door to get some air. Upper bunk is a great place to store stuff while you're driving, sleeping bags, pillows, other stuff. On the driver's side of the RV, we've got a little bit of storage above a freezer and a refrigerator. Uh, and they both work great, nice and clean, lots of storage. Some more storage below, right next to the heater. Great for those trips, ski trips to Mammoth. Sundry items like uh, light supplies, scissors, pens, paper, etc. And a nice big closet for hanging those ski jackets uh, or extra pair of jeans for camping. A lot of the clothes we keep in these bins here, two on the driver's side. Uh, three on the passenger side of these cabinets and uh, these little bins inside make it easy to store food. Got a home built fly rod rack there above the passenger side bench. And of course the kitchen window with a hood over the stove with a light and a fan. The driving setup is really easy. We've got three seat belts on the passenger side, two on the driver's side. This table comes with a mate that can be put into the left, but we like to leap it open when we're driving just to make it easy to get around the RV and have someone pass the driver. Coke if he needs one while he's driving. Of course, the window shades come on down. We've got some insulated window shades for the, the front window, sides windows as well. And then uh, you can see that access to the driving cabin is really simple. Um, you can just kind of go in uh, gets, while you're driving and someone can move up and back from the passenger seat. Um, it's a pretty basic van um, cockpit with uh, about 35,000 miles of the, as of this video in September, 2019. Uh, we've got uh, a towing adjuster for generating more torque if you're towing. And uh, let's see, cruise control, uh, an entertainment system here that has what you'd expect. Uh, but the most important thing is probably this rear camera, which is more than a backup camera. It runs while you're driving, so it acts like a rear view mirror. Much more functional than this rear view mirror, which is really just good for watching the kids create mayhem while you're driving along. More about the sleeping setup in our next video.